Inbreeding, vs. line breeding, what's best for game and fowl? Most breeders think line breeding and inbreeding are the same. That mistake could cost you years of wasted time, effort, and bloodlines. So today, we're gonna break it down. We'll look at the difference, the science, the real-world results, and help you choose what's best for your yard. Let's get started. Chapter 1. Clear Definitions, What They Really Mean First Off Let's clear up any confusion between these two terms. Inbreeding is when you make close relatives, such as a father to his daughter or a brother to his sister, also known as full siblings. Now line breeding is when you control who your birds mate with to preserve certain traits from a specific ancestor without mating super close relatives. So in essence, inbreeding is like using a microscope, while line breeding is more like using a telescope. Chapter 2. Pros and Cons. The Risks and Rewards. So now let's talk about the pros and cons of each method. First, inbreeding. You get fast genetic lock-in, meaning you can quickly establish traits in your bloodline. Also, you can use inbreeding to test or isolate a specific trait, either good or bad. This is why some breeders inbreed their fowl to see if they have hidden undesirable traits. However, there's also a dark side to inbreeding. You have a higher chance of expressing harmful recessive traits due to increased homozygosity. Homozygosity means having two similar genes for a certain trait. This can lead to weaker vitality and birds prone to illness or injury. And if you're thinking about crossing your inbred birds back out, just be aware that you might still express those same harmful traits. Now line breeding. Here's the pro. You can keep those great traits nice and consistent over time. Now here's the con. It takes patience, good records, and direction to successfully line breed gamefowl, but we'll get into how to do that in just a bit. Chapter 3. When should you inbreed? So inbreeding is best used when you want to test or isolate a new trait in your birds. For example, you might inbreed to see if your flock has a lot of hidden black color genes. Or maybe you want to make a foundation cock or hen that really displays a certain look or style. However, never inbreed without a purpose. Don't just do it because you think it'll make your bird stronger or more aggressive. Ask yourself why you're inbreeding before you get started. Chapter 4. How Line Breeding Works There's three main ways to practice line breeding. First, the 3-2-2 cross which means that the same ancestor appears in the third and second generation of your birds. Next, we have uncle-to-niece or aunt-to-nephew crosses. These are classic line breeding techniques that can help you keep 25 to 37.5% of that bird's blood influence in your family tree. And finally, you can use the straight line system where you continuously select for the best birds from one generation to the next and always keep the same bloodline going. Now all of these methods will help you build a line of birds based on one superior bird and its blood influence. Remember, Line breeding keeps the blood of a great ancestor in your birds while mixing in some new blood to keep things fresh and avoid inbreeding depression. Chapter 5. Real Examples from Famous Bloodlines Now let us take a look at some famous game fowl bloodlines and how they were developed and maintained. First, we have the McLean Hatch bloodline. It was reportedly built using inbreeding and then maintained using line breeding. Sweater, also known as the McGinnis Chandler, was line bred for performance and style. Then we have the Kelso line. They were known for their incredible intelligence and cutting ability, and it was said that they were preserved through selective line breeding over many years. These are just a few examples of how line breeding and inbreeding can help you build and maintain great bloodlines. If you want to learn more about these bloodlines, check out our podcast episode on famous Gamecock bloodlines. Chapter 6. Genetic Depression. The Silent Killer. All right, now let's talk about something that can really wreck your bloodline. Genetic depression. Inbreeding increases homozygosity, which means having two similar genes for a certain trait. This can be a problem because sometimes having two similar genes can cause problems. In fact, most genetic disorders are caused by having two copies of a harmful gene. So if you're inbreeding your birds, you need to be on the lookout for signs of genetic depression. Some signs to look out for are high chick mortality, stunted growth, weak constitution, and early burnout. If you see these signs in your flock, it's time to outcross. But remember, outcrossing isn't always easy. You need to know what you're redoing to make sure you do want to introduce any unwanted traits into your bloodline. Chapter 7. The Power of Outcrossing After Line Breeding All right, now let's talk about the power of outcrossing after line breeding. After a few generations of line breeding, it's smart to bring in some new blood to your family. This helps to increase heterozygosity, which is having different versions of a gene. This can help boost hybrid vigor, also known as heterosis, which can result in healthier, stronger birds. When choosing a bird to outcross your linebred birds, look for one that will complement your birds rather than compete with them. For example, if you have a powerful gamecock that lacks speed, you might want to consider crossing it with a hen from a bloodline known for its speed and agility. This can help you create offspring that inherit the best traits from both parents. Remember, crossing two linebred families together can also yield great results. 
Many successful breeders use this method to maintain and enhance the traits they desire in their birds. Chapter 8. Record Keeping – Your Secret Weapon Now let's talk about the importance of record keeping. In order to effectively line breed your birds, you need to keep detailed records of their parentage, performance, and brood quality. This will help you track the bloodlines and traits you're working with over time. There are a number of ways to keep track of your records, but I prefer using a journal or breeding software. It is essential to have your records organized, so you can easily refer back to them when making breeding decisions. Plus, a bloodline is built on paper first, then tested in the pit. So make sure you keep detailed and accurate records of your birds. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Chapter 9. What's best for you? The best breeding method for you will depend on your goals and resources. As I mentioned earlier, inbreeding is best used when you want to test or isolate a specific trait. Line breeding is great for maintaining and enhancing existing traits over time, while outcrossing is useful for recovering or improving a bloodline. Remember that your breeding goal should guide your method, not the other way around. Take the time to assess your needs and resources before deciding on a breeding method. With careful planning and execution, you can successfully breed game fowl and create bloodlines that excel in the pit. Chapter 10. Final Tips and Pitfalls to Avoid Let's wrap things up with some final tips and pitfalls to avoid. First off, be aggressive with culling. Only keep the best birds that display the traits you're looking for. Don't be afraid to call the rest. Next, make sure you're breeding from tested fowl. Don't just rely on looks or reputation. Test your birds in the pit to see how they perform. Keep good records. Like I said before, a bloodline is built on paper first, then tested in the pit. And finally, have a clear vision for your yard. Know what traits you want to focus on and what you want to eliminate. And now for the pitfalls to avoid. First, don't inbreed blindly. Never inbreed without a clear purpose or plan. Don't keep all of your offspring. Be aggressive with culling and only keep the best birds. Don't follow trends or advice from people who haven't done the work themselves. And don't cross too often. If you're constantly crossing your birds with different bloodlines, you'll lose consistency and won't be able to build a strong bloodline. And there you have it folks, we've covered a lot of ground today, but remember, the key to successful breeding is knowledge, planning, and patience. So keep learning, keep planning, and don't get discouraged. And always remember, breeding is not a hobby. It's a legacy. One wrong pair can ruin years, but one wise match. That could be your signature bloodline. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel and comment below which method is your favorite. Inbreeding, line breeding, or outcrossing. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, happy breeding and may the best bloodline win.